ugly shoes are taking over. What are those? When you walk down the street and you see Frankenstein's clogs strapped to someone's feet, you think there's gotta be something wrong here. Are these companies literally trying to make ugly shoes? It feels like the worst business model of all time. And yet the companies that produce these foot grenades make multi-billion dollar fortunes, fortunes that you can actually invest in. Since their IPOs, ugly shoe sales and market caps have blown sky high in a way that no one predicted. Or did they? Maybe there's a strategy here. But in order to figure that out, there were three questions I needed answers to. How did bad looking fashion become so darn successful? What investment strategy can I take to profit off of the next big ugly shoe? Or is it possible for the next big ugly shoe to come from an incredibly unlikely source? Me. So I began digging into these companies and their beginnings, looking for investment trends, and attempting to take inspiration from current brands in order to build my own shoe. And that's when the idea for the perfect ugly shoe hit me. A wise scholar once said, I wear your granddad's clothes. I look incredible. Okay, so that was Macklemore. But maybe he had a point. Not only relating to old looking stuff, but also bad looking stuff. Before diving into business strategies and psychology, let's see what we're talking about. Because the ugly shoe business is far more profitable than you think. I mean, Crocs, the brand responsible for what Time Magazine called one of the 50 worst inventions of all time, foam clogs, is now worth more than 10 times Time Magazine. Well, well, well. How the turntables. Just in 2021, share price more than doubled and their revenue reached a record $2.3 billion, selling this, or this, or even this. No, 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 no. Oh my God, oh my God! But Crocs isn't alone at the top. In fact, they're not even at the top of Ugly Shoe Mountain. Take Deckers. You know the company responsible for these? Deckers launched in 1973 by selling flip-flops to surfers in California. It's now worth more than $6 billion. They went from this to this. It's crazy. They launch a new model, people buy it, and that's it. It's really that simple. And investors are starting to take notice. Bloomberg called this the multi-billion dollar race to the ugliest shoe. And it's just getting started. Louis Vuitton acquired Birkenstock for a deal that's rumored to be about $5 billion. But how can you build a fashion company on something that's universally unattractive? Isn't that a suicidal business plan? It's like opening a cookie shop that only sells oatmeal raisin. Or is it perhaps the case of hidden genius? Let's turn the clock back to 2002. Three friends were sailing on a boat in the Caribbean Sea on the way to Mexico, soaking up the sun and the surf. One of them was wearing this pair of strange hold filled boating shoes produced by a Canadian company, Foam Creations. And when he asked his friends what they thought, you won't believe what they said. They said, they're ugly as of course they did, because they are. They look a little something like what a Dutch boy might make for a school project, but they had something. They had purpose. They were practical, breathable, not slippery, and they were comfortable. But what's even better is these clogs were not made of rubber. Instead, they were made of this special closed cell resin called cross light that made them light and warm. For my own shoe project, I needed to find an unexplored niche like Crocs did with boating. One that requires specialized shoes, but isn't oversaturated with options. Something known, but not too known. Cool, but not too cool. And then it hit me, bowling. It was perfect. Just niche and weird enough. The design here could be a crossbreed of functionality in the sport and usability in normal life. And I knew it could be high fashion. But bowling shoes are already weird. Was it possible to make them even weirder? As the rubber clog crew were sailing back to Florida, the three friends decided to launch this perfect boating shoe, believing it would become popular among sailors and the like. But they had a problem. The resin cross light was patented. It belonged exclusively to Foam Creations. How would they turn this dream into a reality? Steal the design? Worse? Well, they actually just outright purchased the Canadian company. And in the years that followed, the company got bigger and bigger. They rapidly sold every single pair, and not just to sailing enthusiasts. Everyone from waiters, nurses, George W. Bush, even my friend Dan, all own Crocs. Crocs went public in 2006 and the IPO is the largest ever for a US footwear company. Now it makes sense that normal, boring people like nurses and my friend Dan like a comfortable shoe, but how did a product that even the founders themselves 
find ugly become high fashion? Like how did these become cool? Why do top brands like Balenciaga want to collaborate with Crocs, which as I said, was one of the 50 worst products of all time. And how the heck did they get celebrities like Post Malone and Rihanna to all rock the Croc? It began to feel like there was maybe an unwritten rule in fashion. The weirder and uglier, the better. So I needed to figure out how to make my bowling shoe weird, like really weird. I mean, even KFC made clogs with a piece of baked chicken on top. And guess what? They sold out. Most of my ideas ended up looking like something Inspector Gadget would wear. And that's when I came across this photo of Kanye. Instead of going big, my shoe could take this ultra minimal approach. So I did some actual mock-ups and legitimately sent it to a designer. And he said, are you sure you want to pay me to make these? And I said, I bet your ass I am. Investing in fashion is difficult because trends are mysterious. Sometimes being cool is lame and being lame is actually kind of cool. It all depends on intentions and context and it also helps to be a model. But what if I told you it's more predictable than you think? There could be a profit angle here. But in order to understand how to profit, you must first understand the psychology because ugly in fashion means a whole different thing. There are several theories as to why people are more attracted to bad looking shoes and some factors stand out. The first is originality. According to cognitive psychologist Carolyn Mayer, people have a tendency of ignoring normal objects because they know how to process them already. So when you're walking down the street and someone is wearing green shoes with this five inch platform, you see it as brave and original, or maybe you hate them. But still, it sends a strong message, and that's the whole point. It says that that person is willing to take the risk of being ridiculous. And as much as it sounds like cliche, the numbers prove it. The second factor is beauty. According to some psychologists, beauty has nothing to do with fashion anymore. Pretty used to mean difficult to get or hard to make, but with mass manufacturing, pretty has become more of a commodity. So instead, consumers want to question beauty. And not just question, they want to tear it apart and turn it upside down. I mean, why else would you pay big bucks for Velcro sandals? There's pride here. It's like saying, I'm so cool that even when I'm uncool, I'm still cool. And again, it helps to be hot. But this is the same reason why a urinal is just a urinal until someone like Duchamp puts it in a museum and then boom, it's art. Sure, when he does it, it's art, but when I try, it's a felony. Duchamp wants to prove that art isn't about aesthetics anymore, but about sending a message. So ugly shoes aren't successful despite being ugly, but because of it. Fashion is a dangerous business and that's something to consider. So is the timing right or is this all gonna pass? Well, this cultural shift has been going on for years. If you think about it, the meaning and purpose of shoes has changed completely through the years. First shoes were purely for utility, protect your feet and last a long time. Then technology advanced, utility got easy, and we transitioned into cool looking but generally uncomfortable footwear. Think about sex in the city, elegant shoes and clothing. But now elegance has become too standard. People don't want to dress like characters out of Mad Men anymore. Of course, the classic style still exists, but it doesn't stand out quite the same anymore. And this has been taken to the extreme. Look at the latest Balenciaga runway. Their models are walking down the runway in Crocs and trash bags. Skid Row has gone mainstream, but why? Well, after the pandemic, everything changed. After spending two years working from home in their pajamas, people value comfort more than anything. This has been a challenge for my shoe brand. My initial design is done, but how am I able to take the most minimal style possible and also make it comfortable? Look at Kanye, if he steps on a pebble in those shoes, he's done for. I was starting to think that this is impossible to actually come up with the next big ugly shoe. It was harder than I thought to balance all the necessary details. I mean, the shoes I'm wearing right now are literally called Hey Dudes. I mean, if that doesn't scream I work from home, I don't know what does. In a society with almost 8 billion people looking down at their phones, comparing everyone to everyone, individuals want to stand out. In the past, rich people and celebrities wore top of the line fashion. Now our celebrities and influencers walk around in ripped clothes and torn old sneakers. Celebrities more than anyone want to be unique, want their personal brand to stand out. Kanye is the best at this, but other examples are Justin Bieber and Post Malone. The cooler you are, the more you can afford to not care. Back in my own shoe world, I was feeling awful. It felt like high fashion bowling shoes weren't gonna cut it in the ruthless world of fashion. The target demographic 
of first users is too small. There just isn't enough of a following in the sport. The average bowler is more like this than this. So I was calling it a wrap on this project. It was a dumb idea, but that's when it hit me. I knew what I needed to make. The momentum for ugly shoes is building. It's no wonder brands like Gucci and Burberry sell shoes my dad would salivate over. Maybe you don't wanna build your own brand, but you wanna invest in the ugly shoe wave. I mean, both Crocs and Decker's stock has more than tripled the return of the S&P 500 over the last five years. So here's some things that you wanna look at when investing in an ugly shoe company. These principles help me make an 80% return on Steve Madden stock. First, sales and profit. Are they growing year over year? Debt to equity and inventory turnover ratio. You wanna compare this to competitors. The inventory turnover ratio helps us determine the efficiency of each company. And the last factor is the ability to last. Fashion trends change and a company needs to be able to adapt. No one does this better than Decker's. This company owns some of the world's most feared brands. Even Tom Brady, who's wishy-washy about whether he's gonna stay retired or not, never had one doubt about his Ugg boots. Deckers has been in the business since the 70s, and despite all transformations, they proudly remained ugly. At Deckers, the strategy was always to look out for small ideas with big potential. They knew they needed to conquer new markets if they wanted to stay in business. For this reason, they purchased Ugg for less than $15 million in 1995. Now it makes a billion in sales every year. Then they wanted to expand with sports shoes. They bought Hoka in 2012. In other words, fashion keeps changing, and it's vital to constantly find new trends. If you can find a company that does this profitably, you have yourself a winning investment. What about my own brand? I had a completely new idea, but I needed to revisit strategy so I didn't waste any more time in the wrong niche. So I sat down and came up with the four keys to ugly shoes. These would be my mantras. The first key is utility. This is essential. The founders of Crocs made a fortune because these clogs were created for a specific purpose. It was designed for people on boats and then it expanded way beyond that. My original bowling shoes had this, but they needed more. The second key is comfort. This is where the bowling shoe was starting to fall apart. Third key, design. Go wild with a very unique design. As we've seen with ugly shoes, there's no such thing as bad publicity, but there probably is such thing as bad ideas. It can't be random ugliness. It has to be just bad enough to be likable. Fourth, of course, social media. This is where I knew the bowling shoe would never take off. The community just wasn't big enough. Just when I was gonna call it a wrap on this project, it hit me, the perfect shoe to exploit, a weightlifting shoe. It's specialized, typically uncomfortable, and fitness social media is massive. I just needed to keep in mind utility, comfort, design, and social media, and I would have a winning product. The most common weightlifting shoes right now are either Converse or something like this. Breaking down the characteristics, they have flat bottoms, very sturdy base, and a snug fit. So I got to work breaking down materials, form, and exaggerated shape that I was looking for. Made some rough drawings and hired a 3D artist to actually turn this shoe into a reality. After a few revisions, I finally had my shoe. My shoes feature a breathing design allowing for airflow, high top maximum ankle support, and the most sturdy base in the business. I present you the next big thing in fitness fashion. But I couldn't stop there. I needed to name my shoe company. From here, we needed a website. Now that everything was built, I just needed some promotion. So I decided to start reaching out to fitness influencers to see if anyone would do a sponsored post. I ended up finding a few who would actually do this. Creating an email list, I was able to get signups for this ridiculous design. And just like that, I'm on my way to the next billion dollar shoe company.